Hello and welcome to Florian Models Kit View Time. Today we've got Meng's release of the 135th scale AH64D Apache Longbow. Now again, a lot has been said about this particular kit and a lot has been said clearly about this kit. Because like buses, we were spoiled because two came along at once. Um, but originally, if I remember rightly, the Meng one was announced first, then the Takam one, then Meng said they were doing it with the folded rotor system and then Takam said they were doing it as well. And then certainly from our point of view in the UK, Takam has released pretty much every single version. So we've got the Longbow, we've got the Echo, we've got the foreign ones, we've got the AH1, the British version, and all the rest of it. And so far, all we've seen is the one version from Meng. But I imagine Meng are probably going to be releasing another. And it's one of those situations where a lot of people have said, which one would you build? Well, I couldn't mention or talk about it really, or comment, because I've never actually seen the Meng one. Because but it hasn't been available in the UK for months and months and months. So all of a sudden, they dropped literally this week so I thought I'll grab one we'll have a good look at it and I'm going to do a separate video comparing the kits like for like all right because I think what it'll be is unfair to do that on this kit on its own merit so I'm going to review this one as a standalone and then I will do a follow-on video and we will look at both kits together to really pick out which one we think's best all right from detail instructions ease of build the usual bits and pieces like that but I'll do that as a separate video so this one will be purely on the merits of the kit itself which I think is a lot more fair anyway as you can see on the box nice box art I do like Meng's box art uh, obviously we've got the sort of classic golf war look we've got some Kiowas in the background as well uh, right the way through so as you can see on the box we've got some of the details again does come with pretty much we've seen before everything's opened up and looking so we've got some nice engine work we've actually got the ammo loading bay and the electronics bays on both sides nicely detailed engine we said before some various lumps and bumps all over this one as you can see so your kit number for this one is uh, QS004, all right, uh, just down on here, a little bit more blump about the H64 longbow and the kit info itself, all right. So in the box, we are greeted by another stuffed full box, absolutely full. So we'll get rid of the blurb sheet. We've got multiple individual bags, as you can see, and obviously we'll have a proper look through all these afterwards. It's the big crinkly rustly bag. This is the first time I've actually seen this kit. I haven't seen it before. So again, it's quite nice to work our way through all of these and have a proper look through it. it looks very nice, to be honest. There we go. We've got the fuselage halves down there and we've got some other bits. So it is a stuffed, stuffed bag full of bits, as you can see. So again, we've got the clear parts looking very nice indeed. Keep those nice and safe. And then down in here, We've got just a small piece of photo etch, all right, but we've got a huge big decal sheet and also we've got a really nice die cut mask one and it's even been taken off the, uh, the skeletons, if you like, around it, just leaving you the actual mask, which is very, very nice indeed. So some really nice details. And again, it's a mask set for inside and out as well. So we've got a full set there, which would be interesting to have a look at at the moment. And then down in here, we've got a bag with all the bits in. So let's dive straight in. So if you've ever built Meng before, you know they do this card system, all right, which has these down in here with all the information, just like this. They do it for all those kits. It's like a data file system you can put in there, which talks all about, obviously, the millimeter, the APG-78 radar system. And if you're a um, helicopter fan like I am and fly DCS, you'll know that we're actually getting this for our longbow as well. So that's quite good. All right, so we'll pop that out of the way. We've also got two giant scaled pull outs as well so we'll look at those in a minute but to start with we'll have a look with the old instructions so what we'll do is drop the camera just a little bit there we go all right so usual bits and pieces how to make a model all right and then we are straight into this one so again straight away i can see various differences between this and the other said kit the tack and one so one of them all is the separate panels all the way through going through this one and building up all the cockpit areas just down in here all right so again very nicely done how they've done all this broken it down looking at this we've got three versions of it as well so as you say we've got it looks like the japanese one or the taiwanese one down in here so again very nice indeed and then generally as we say working our way through it we're putting obviously all the actual cockpits so we've got the collectives the rudder pedals things like that and cyclics all being put in place and then obviously we've got the panel behind 
there's a panel on the side. All right, then we've got the seat. So again, it's nice because we've got a separate cushioning as well. So we've got these big armored plates on the sides. And again, I assume they are molded in the closed position, but some of them you can maneuver the wings in and out as well. All right, but it looks like it's in the open. We've got a rear bulkhead going in the back as well. And then obviously it looks like we've got a color call out and decals making up for the actual inside the cockpit for the instrument panels just down in there then on the front down in here as well we've got the tdac system as well being fitted down in here and for the front for the gunner all right so that's those being fitted down in there and again nice touch with this we've got the early type which has got the hood so you actually look down in on the h64d the later ones just have the screen uh, for the tdac as well so again that's really nice we didn't see that with the other version all right down in there so this is what we're talking about we've got both types down in there that's a very welcome sight to see then we've got the covers and again doesn't look like they can pull forward or back because obviously they've got little wings on the side which can actually slide back and forth i don't think they actually do on this one but again for being in the power down position they would never be closed anyway all right so there we go that's those all being stored down in there then we've got the sides going on there and all the bits and pieces as you can see being fitted down in there looks like we don't get the gun uh in the side as for the crew protection all right then we're straight off to the actual main rotor assembly itself so we've got the reduction gear and the bits and pieces down through those we've got the shafts as well coming up for the top and then obviously all being fitted in there again that actually looks very nice as well for the main rotor all right opening up some of the holes and the various bits and pieces and again we've got the guys down in here for the fuselage assembly again looks like we've actually got part i don't know if you'll actually see it unless it's opened up on the other one uh, for those ones coming through for the actual drive shaft to the rear as well being fitted in but again being important to open up these holes where called out for depending on which versions you're doing and again same on the other side as you can see just down in there that's all nice and again we've got very much good details about calling out for these ones right the way through as you can see and again looking how this is sort of modularly done looks like their fuselage system will fit for older a apaches right the way through to the echoes so again those ones stub wings being fitted down onto that one as well so that's all those being fitted in all right and then again the way this is different i'm sort of seeing different versions of this coming out as well so on this side we've got the ammunition loader for the 30 uh, millimeter cannon for the chain gun underneath all right it's going to be fitted up and again one thing we didn't see to be honest with the tacom kit is all the detail color call outs for painting obviously you're doing this one which is quite nice right the way through and then again being fitted so obviously open and closed position for the electronic bays and then obviously we've got the main gear struts coming up and in with all of that together you can put the cowls and the hoods going down on the back as well so that's fine with all of those being fitted in all of these then we're actually starting to work on the main engine assembly and again looks to be a very nice detailed engine and with a little bit of wiring and a little bit of care you could actually turn that into a real masterpiece to be seen as well then we've got the ir suppressors on the exhaust system all being fitted down into those ones as well so that's very nice indeed and then obviously you've got all the covers and the various bits being fitted down onto this one so very nice and then obviously exactly the same as well for the other engine as those go through then we're fitting all of these down and in place and again you've got covers being open again we've got detail color call outs as well for all the parts as you can see down in there nice touch with this kit is that we do get a mask set for it which is really really welcome because again we're probably all going to go after market and get another one for it but it does come with a kit so that's very very nice as well and a nice little detailed area pointing out where they are going to be used but to be honest the window shapes are all different so you're not going to get it wrong all right and then and then obviously we've got the glass between the cockpits as well between the actual pilot and the gunner so again those ones being fitted in and inside as well we've got things like the handles and the various ones we've even got the little rear view mirror which is what that is fitted down in the back and then over onto the front we've got all the various bits pieces being fitted as well so we've got the sort of demisting stuff for the environmental controls as well those are all being fitted down in there as well we do get the guns i did wonder if they're going to put them in they clearly do play dcs so again you've got uh, the guns obviously the stowage rack standing here at the front and obviously the one for the pilot as well being fitted down in there side windows and glass being fitted and then obviously open and closed depending on how you'd want them and obviously we've got the struts and the no grab symbols and various things being fitted on the side of the cows moving over to the top as well the way this is modular it's definitely pointing out older and newer types of the apache on this actual fuselage which makes sense so we've got all of those being fitted down in there with the different stuff uh, down in here we've got the disco ball on the back and the various sensors down here on the front 
the actual um, pods on the front for the nose for the actual uh, targeting system as well. All of those ones looks very nice. Looks like we've got poly caps and things going down in here as well. So it should be movable and workable. So we've got the Pilot's Night Vision one being fitted down onto the top as well. So that's very nice indeed. And then the side plates being fitted on and the various bits as well as are those going down. Windscreen wipers looking nice. And again, we've got this little bar here, which is actually to stop it uh, for catching on wires and stuff. So it gets pushed over the top to the actual uh, wire cutter on the top. And again, same on the bottom, gear, various things. We've got weight on wheels as well by the looks of it. Again, looks very nice. Again, detail color call outs all the way through. Highlights always going to be the chain gun underneath. So it looks very nice as well, the way that that's all going. Very good. And that's going to fit down. And it looks like it's like a bayonet system, perhaps how this is going to fit in. So again, it should be poseable and maneuverable down underneath the actual aircraft as well, which is very nice. Tail wheel system as well. And then obviously we've got the stabilizer on the rear. Again, looking very nice. And again, these small little turn ups and turn downs. As I say, it's quite nice that they detail pointed out which way these go. So that's very good. And then obviously we've got all the lumps and bumps and the various things being fitted down onto the outside will obviously be dependent on the version you're actually doing. And again, looking very nice. All the small details which are going to really bring all this to life all the way through. So that's actually looking very nice and very welcome. Then we've got the rockets. So we've got, actually got the pylons and obviously we've got the hydras over here, the 261s. And obviously we've got some AGM 114s as well for the Hellfires. And then obviously different types as well. So we've got the radar guided and the laser guided types of Hellfire. We've got stingers as well. So again, if you wanted to give it that proper air to air loadout, I don't think the US do that anymore, but other nations clearly do. And again, we've got Hellfire racks as well being fitted down into those, which looks very nice indeed. And again, just some little tiny details to point out, some various parts to come off and things for the actual end caps, depending on which version you're doing it and loading it out. So again, depending if you've got stingers on the actual wingtips or the actual hellfires and just hydras on there, just like that. Last up, obviously we've got the fire control radar down at the top. We've got the various ones being fitted down in there and the sensors and we've got the radar warning receivers being fitted to it and the laser uh, warning uh, receivers as well fitted onto it. Last up, and it's a real highlight because any aircraft or helicopter, I should say, that you can actually fold the rotors is an absolute must because it just doesn't take up half your display cabinet then. And this one definitely does that. So again, you can do it rotors open, no problem at all, or you can do it rotors folded. There's a little bit of surgery to be done if you're folding it up, but again, I think it'll be well worth doing it that way. Another beautiful little touch with this kit, which I really, really like, it's got little fog guards. So we've got the fog covers for the exhausts, those being fitted down in there. I've got the APU one as well. So that's really nice to see things like that. Then obviously we've got the actual uh, system, which is gonna hold the rotors. So it clamps to the rear sort of tail boom, and it's gonna hold and support the weight of all those rotors once they're on tail rotor again pretty straightforward that one's being fitted on there just like that and then last up we got the sensors on the outside as well uh, being fitted on and a couple of antennas on the top and there we go so straight off the bat i'll be honest with you that looks to be a far more detailed build than we saw with the tacken one just some of the details down in there looks very very nice indeed so we've got these huge pullouts which are really nice so these are massive massive okay so we've got one down in here again with all nice color references and then obviously we've got some detail for the actual decal placement and all the rest of it so the one down in here is one from a company uh second of 100 air force was so this one is down from 2003 in mosul in iraq so again saw lots of action down in there so obviously 101st obviously we've got the cavalry sign as well down here on the front which is very nice and on the other side down in here we've got the Japanese one which it was the Japanese one which is very nice as well which doesn't have Japanese markings on it which is a bit weird but I do love their color scheme it's really nice with the buff the green and with the black it's just something a little bit different as well and again that's where you're going to be using stingers uh, on these I do believe the Japanese ones carry stingers uh, as well so that's very nice then You've got some really nice get down into this. So this is for your decal placement, as you can see. Huge big pull out with all of these for the decal placements. Again, it's a nice easy guide to follow. And to be honest, if you did want to do a grey one, they did do it. They did have a grey one. It was going around in ghost greys, which was quite nice. So if you did want to do something a little bit different, I've got a feeling it might be a later one, might be an echo, but 
so enough okay so down in here we've got the decals we've got a little bit of photo etch again you know it's horses for courses and as i say i didn't want to do a direct comparison against the tacken one and this one but the tacken one did come with a hell of a lot more postage i can't be bothered to cut in here so we're just gonna sort of kill myself with a staple <laughs> so a little bit of a highlight is this so what we've got down in here is a moss set and it's on a piece of acetate but it is kabooey tape which is really really nice straightforward going to be easy to do and it's not numbered but honestly you can't get it wrong you'll know exactly which ones of these will go to obviously we've got pilot's door ones and obviously we've got gunner's door ones so forth and so on all right so they are inside and out so they're both sided so that's really nice as well we've got this little bit of photo etch which is very thick all right but again for what it is so what you've got down in here is the two these are the strafes which go down behind the rotor head and run down the actual fuselage and then these down in here are the ones off of the tail um actually off of the actual uh, fin off the back and obviously one points down one points up really nice it's done in photo etch because i thought originally they purpose were going to be done in plastic which would be a little bit of a, a thing to get right all right so that's very very nice then we've got the markings beautiful decal sheet as you can see clear concise all the way through so we've got the framework as well around the framing for the windows for the actual seals down in there as well obviously we've got all the weapons we've got all the missiles and we've got the various ones down in here so we've got the japanese ones down like this and then obviously we've got the ones as well from the air force uh sorry the army ones down in here as well but again really nice minimal tape um sorry carrier film I'll catch it in the light it's all just to catch it there we go you can see it's all minimal stuff down in there very very nice indeed and it's funny how they've done the japanese markings clearly there's a licensing issue here for using the japanese markings so what they've done is they haven't shown it on the instructions and they've cut them in half to get around that if you're wondering what that is so there we go that's really very nice indeed so i can just slip these back just down in here and we'll keep those nice and flat and safe so straight into it again just back the back of this off okay so to start with we have the fuselage so this guy here i imagined at some point was probably like here just holding the tail section on but i'm just gonna to be honest we're gonna hoof that off because it's in the way so generally looking at it the surface detail is beautiful very very nice the actual raised rivet details and things like that look very very good indeed uh, and generally the surface detail looks a little bit finer shall we say than what we saw on the tacken one just a little bit more detailed so coming in here you can see the difference obviously we've got the refueling port the various areas down in here the stuff around the engine and the bays it just looks a little bit finer and refined but again i will do a side by side comparison so we can see but that looks all very nice indeed and again it is raised rivets so unfortunately if you do have a situation like under here and you've got a seam or anything it means you've got to be incredibly careful because otherwise you're going to sand away any detail when you've got to do any filler work and then you've got to replace them so that's the downside to having raised rivets and everyone says raised rivets are brilliant not until you've got to put them all back in it isn't all right so again that looks very very nice and detailed on the other side basically it's not much difference there's just a few differences in this area up here so again looks very very nice but generally it looks very very sharp very very crisp very very nice it gives you an idea of the size it's going to be roughly around about 45 centimeters long but that looks very very nice with both of those so whilst we're here we'll just pop down into the so the way that they've done this is slightly different so obviously they've got different fuel tanks on the apache some of them have larger fuel tanks smaller gun bays other than are bigger gun bays smaller fuel tanks various things as well so they've done like a drop-in fillet for this one which is very nice so this is the one that's going to go under the belly of it which means it's going to come down in here all right so again looks very very nice the way they've done that and then we've got the side areas so this is the um 
starboard side so this will be the gun area refuel uh, marking and the weapons and the various bits and pieces down in here looks very nice and because they've done it this way i'm imagining we may see the a because obviously these are a lot smaller on the a model they're not as big and bulky at the back here and things like that they're a little bit more skinny but generally looks very very nice we've got the landing light area things like that looking very good as i say the one drawback is we haven't got all the covers and the bits and pieces down in here on the back Obviously, when you go to the Echo, I think it goes a little bit further back. But sometimes we do these in Photo Etch. And I think we saw Photo Etch with the Tacken one. Again, onto the other side. So this is the front one area to the rears, various areas, access ports and things. Looking very, very nice indeed. Good, clean, sharp, crisp details all the way through. And we've got this little lump here, which I do believe is off the tail. I think this is the tail area because again they changed it slightly between the later ones and the earlier ones and things here so hopefully we've got a nice grill that's going to go down in there again would it be nice to see those in photo etch to make them a little bit more accurate and obviously we don't see that with this particular kit so i just pop those in there and we can keep those somewhat safe <coughs> there you go right so where do we start where do we start i don't think it matters where we start on this one so we're just gonna plod our way through so we've got duplicate screws in here this is screw l on lima all right so down in here as you can see we've got lots of detailed stuff and lots of things we can see so we've got the tails we've got some of the exhaust areas some of the very fine details you can probably see we've got lots of small parts down in here various bits and pieces going on down in here some of the covers which actually doesn't look too bad at all we've got weight on wheels as well so that's quite nice with all of those ones done the various bits we've got the seats so down in here this is the seats with the armor panels on the side uh, we've got the pylons as well which is very nice some of the engine details down in here i think this is part of the hellfire racks on here we've got the exhausts and obviously down in here we've got the tail rotor and again we've got the laminations which look very nice and very sharp and again we've even got the little kink on the tail rotor itself it's got the little deflection so that's actually very nice indeed and molded beautifully on both sides and generally looking around no sink marks all the ejector pins seem to be tucked out of the way which is really nice as well so nothing's really showing and typical meng way of doing it really nice clean sharp crisp molding with there okay so okay so down in here we've got the pylons and the various bits which again beautiful raised details all the way through looks all very very nice indeed generally very nice We've got no ejector pins inside the doors, although we have got tiny, tiny little ones. So tiny, tiny little ejector pins just there, but they're so flush and so small, I don't think you'd even worry about it. All right, so again, they are on an area where you could get in there and just rub them out if you wanted to. But generally though, if you look at the detail on the actual, uh, those pylons or the little stub wings, looking very nice. The underside got the strengthening plates in very very nice indeed the only downside is this one has got ejector pins on it so you've got five ejector pins down in there so again I'm going to take a little bit of a rub or a little bit of a fill whichever way you want to do it to get rid of that these little get guys in here it's a little bit of slide molding that's been going on down in here are the fronts of the actual pylons themselves and again looking very nice very clean very sharp so as long as these are nicely put in and they go in with no problem at all onto here it will be actually filler free i should imagine that's very nice indeed next up we've actually got the missiles so again we've got two types of um, uh, missiles down in here we've got the radar guided which have got the longer nose down in here uh, which will have the white tip nose and then we've got the laser guided ones as well all right so again we've got those we've got those hydro rockets down in here in pods which look very very nice indeed and again so it's showing in the sort of empty uh, configuration so you've actually got uh, obviously open fronted as if it's not loaded and then down here at the back you've got them somewhat showing loaded because you can't see any light through them but that would be incredibly difficult to mold 
all right but uh, that's one of those things then we got obviously all the racks for the hellfires looking very nice okay so over here looks like we've got the radar and we have the, the radar itself which is fair enough in the various parts i think it's come off it is just separate to it so again you can see looking very nice some nice details on the rotor head as you can see down in here looks very nice we've got the front of that radar will be a slightly different color so it's nicely molded separate and all the parts down on here so very nice so we've got the big shaft we'll see the rotor head itself and obviously all the parts and down in here we've got some of the grab handles and various bits and pieces down the bottom I'm not sure if that one's a mismold or if it's literally just got a bit on the edge or it could be like that who knows looking very nice the actual this is a one piece it's got a small little nub just on the top here it's actually looking very nice indeed it's got the raised panels onto this one it actually looks very nice right the way through so that's very good <clears throat> okay rotors okay so we've got a match pair this is sprue h so we've got a match pair for these ones so again it's a funny way they've done that i thought it had laminations actually in this but i don't think it actually has but uh, anyway here we go sprue h so we've got two of these down here and again we've got various parts up in here for the rotor head all the way through as you might imagine but also we've got the stinger missiles down in here and the various things ah right okay that makes sense so down in here we've got the actual rocket pods in the loaded configuration so you can show them as loaded uh different types of rounds as well so we've got the illumination type stuff as well as the normal he um and stuff so uh yeah did they do the ninja round for it very nice down in here these are those fog guards we were talking about so obviously you can paint them red and close it over we've got the chaff and flare buckets down in here and again some very nice details down in here i assume the actual rotors again got beautiful laminations catch it in the light you can see it. it's very difficult to see it on here but you can see those ones running right the way through beautifully done you've got no sink marks on them or anything else which could cause a little bit of problems but actually all of that is very very nice indeed okay so we've got the tail plane down the back here <clears throat> And again, slightly different the way that they've molded this as a separate piece. On the tacker one, it was one piece in with those sort of side cheeks, if you like. Down in here, it is done separately right the way through. And we've got some of the bays and some of the details down in here as well. So it's actually very, very nice. We've got a little bit of the ammunition being fed down into it as well. But those electronic bays are really nice because we've got the wiring coming down off of them and the plugs which is a lot better, I think, than we saw on the Tacom one. That's quite nice. This tailplane, you can probably see it, catch it in the light, raise rivets as we might expect all the way through. That photo etch is going to go on the trailing edge and then bend one up, one down all the way through. We've got the bays down in here, looking very smart, very good. We've got the doors. So obviously, these are the ones that are going to be open. We've got the hinges and we don't have any ejector pins on the inside of these, which is quite nice. And we've got all the latching detail on the inside. Again, that's all very nice indeed with that one over here we're not going to see this anyway because it's going to be tucked down underneath the rotor head and all the swash plate and all the rest of it down in there but we've got all of that stuff down in there so it's actually looking pretty darn good with all of that then we've got more of the detail so we've got engine parts down in here various bits and pieces we've got the tail wheel uh, and stuff so again we've got various things for the pilot's night vision system up here at the top and obviously with the actual uh, TDAC down at the front. So yes, very, very nice indeed with all these parts. We've got a little bit of exhaust work just down in here. And again, some of the parts, like this little guy, which I will fix afterwards, are just coming off the sprue. They've just been bent a little bit around, but everything else looks to be absolutely fine. So again, you can see it. This is exhausts from the engine. Some targeting pods on the front very nice main gear looks good most of it's hidden anyway and then say more exhausts and various things down in there like that so yeah and again even down in here on the nose system if you see if you've got the actual pod swung round to the side you'll see the details in the back of it so very very nice indeed 
very nice. Okay, I'll keep that somewhat together and tucked out of the way because we can fix that. Okay, so now we've got cockpit bits. <coughs> so we've got these two little guys down in here, which are for the side pods as well. So it's got the radar warning receivers and I think all the bits and pieces in these ones. So these two halves will go together and make the side again nicely detailed all the way through with those ones. So that's very nice indeed. And then down in here, we've actually got the main cockpit, which is some of the biggest differences between this and the Tacom one. The Tacom one, it's all molded in one uh, and away you go. Uh, the main one is all separate. So you've got these separate areas down on here on the front. So again, those all look to be very, very nice indeed. So again, just looking at some of the details seem to be good to me from what I know. That all looks pretty damn sharp and good. So yeah, so starting up here at the front, we've got that padding and the circuit breakers all behind the pilot. Looking all very good. We've got obviously both the Cyclix front and rear for gunner, front and rear. The side panels down in here. So again, this is the pilot's uh, side just down here at the back. And again, that's obviously where he can put his night vision goggles stowed underneath there. And then down over here as well, we've actually got the situation for the actual pilot. So we've got the little keyhole. You don't get the key uh, and the various ones you get. The power levels are going to fit down on here as well. So they're going to go through. And then obviously we've got the sorry, this one here, I think, is the uh, uh, the got to remember which one it is now. So, yes, right the way forward. So, yeah, very nice tiny tiny little parts over on here tiny tiny parts very nice as well so the cockpit itself is a bit of a shell so when you put these in and that's why i'm imagining now we're going to see other versions coming down the line so it's easy to switch some of those details out right the way through and then down on here again we've got, obviously got the this is the pilots one with the two screens at the back the various bits and pieces are down in there so that's very nice and then obviously we've got the gunners one over here we've got the padding We've got the TDAC systems, depending which one you've got. And obviously we've got the uh, carbines down here at the back. So again, very nice as well. Very cool. Very nice. Very sharp details. I like the way it's molded as well. It's very crisp. So this is the tail. It's going to cover the actual uh, shaft going to the tail rotor. That's very nice as well. So it is in a sort of one piece and the hinge is molded to the side of it. So you can actually have it open because it's not actually on the hinge line. They've done it below the hinge line, which is a little bit of a shame if you want to detail it up and have it showing, but it's there. And then down on here, we've got the engine covers, obviously the top bit around the rotor head and all the other parts as well, looking very nice. We've even got the windscreen wipers down in here and all of these areas, as you can see, looks very nice, very sharp, very crisp. Again, we are so sport now. We've got Apaches coming out of our ears. Take your pick. So yeah, really, really nice. So again, checking. We do have some ejector pins down in here. It's a little bit of a shame because obviously you'd have these covers open. This is the engine covers. And also they act as a walkway uh, for the crew when they're working on it. And unfortunately, we do have a couple of ejector pins on there. But again, that's no biggie. Easy to get rid of those. And again, looking very nice all the way through it. Very nice indeed. Okay, two sprues to go. So, look, I wonder where the polycaps were. We found the polycaps. So, polycaps, you can never go wrong with polycaps. And then sprue K has got all the minute little detail stuff and all the hosing and the various things for the gun. So obviously we've got all the gun parts down in here. It is, we've got the cages for it. Again, pilots, windscreen wipers, things like that down in here all the smaller details for everything hanging off the bottom by the looks of it that all looks very very nice indeed and obviously this is the rotor fold section as well and this down in here is the antenna that runs down the tail we've got the giant whip antenna as well that's going to come off the actual uh, top as well from the top of the tail so yeah very very nice indeed so as you can see the gun that 30 mil chain gun looks pretty sweet once it's built up Lots of parts going into it and all the various things. So yes, looking very, very good. 
all the way through. And again, the Apache is covered in various aerials and lumps and bumps and things like that. We've also got all the wire cutter uh, protection system down the bottom here and all the various parts. Even that whip antenna looks very nicely done. So again, very, very nice. It's clean and crisp. We've got very little burring as well. This is the sandwich line between when two parts are molded down in here on the aerials. That's actually very nice. You can usually tell by having a feel on the actual sprue. Sprue feels quite heavy, but actually those don't. So that's nice. Last up, clear parts. Obviously massively important on an Apache. Gotta see where you're going. So, oh, and it, the nice thing about the Apache is because it's flat. So, <laughs> so it's flat windows and they are absolutely crystal clear. Zero distortion, as you might imagine with these ones. And again, a little bit of a curve on these, but these are absolutely crystal clear. Last up, we've got the window test and all these areas. And then obviously, as you might imagine, the laser um, guided hellfires. We've got all the noses for those. We've got the disco light in the back, various navigation lights, various bits and pieces, as you might imagine, right the way over on this one from all the different areas. We've got the landing light, things like that down in here. Very, very nice indeed. But the clear parts are uber, uber clear. Beautifully done. And there you have it. I have to say, I'm very impressed. I was impressed with the Tacken one, to be honest with you. And again, we will do a side-by-side -side pointing out which one I think is best. Just off the cuff, I think this one seems to be a nicer kit than the Tacken one. The reasons I like this particular kit over the Tacken one for doing a D, a longbow Apache is, you've got both types of the actual PDAC system in there. So this is the gunner's sight. The early ones, he had a hood and used to put his head in it. Later, it's just a screen and all the rest of it. Obviously, you don't get that with the Tacken one. It's obviously go with an Echo, has that one, it's the later type and all the rest of it. So you've got that. So if you wanted to do an early AH-1, for instance, that kit's gonna be a lot easier to work it out and get all the bits and pieces done to be a Westland Apache than it would be obviously on the Tacken one. But then Tacken have brought out the AH-1 version, which tackles a lot of these problems, which is fair enough. But again, this one, I think you can do a little bit more with it. It's a little bit more modular for an early Apache, the later Apache and things like that for the, the Longbow version before now they've moved on to the Echoes and all the other ones after it. So from my point of view, just get a little bit more wiggle room with it. Other things as well, this one's obviously got full color details. Admittedly, it's like helo drab right the way over everything. The inside's even helo drab. So I know people complained about lack of color callouts, but honestly, there isn't that many anyway. And a couple of reference shots and that, you can see which one it is. We are spoilt now having all these Apaches around us. We went for a long time without a decent, or a 135th scale one. The 148th scale one was old the Hasegawa probably be your best bet. That was showing its age. Um, it would be nice to see the old one. I know we've spoken about it. And with this particular kit, I don't think it would be a massive stretch for Tacom to release the A, the H64A. And then obviously with this one as well, they could easily do the E's and all the other versions from it. It's a little bit more modular the way that they've done it and it will work a little bit better. And I think the, because of this modulation, we are definitely going to see other versions of this one coming down the line. Will we see them as quick as Tacken released all of theirs? I don't think so. I think Tacken just thought flood the market with all the different versions before this kit came out. But this kit is really, really nice. Is it better than the Tacken one? I don't know, I haven't built them. And obviously out of all of these reviews, I'm giving you my opinion, looking at bits of plastic on a sprue, how it goes together, how it actually works up as a build up and things like that will make a world of difference to my review on the kit. If you do want to see me build it, go back to the uh, 6th of December's PM show and go and like it. So I said, if we get a thousand likes, I'll build both together as a side by side before Christmas. So pop back to that show, have a look at it, hit the like button on that one. That one gets a thousand likes, I'll do it. It's the time of doing this now, it's on like 400. So, uh, but yes, go and have a look at that one. Again, I think it's a beautiful kit. To be honest, as I sit here right now, I would build both. I wouldn't have a problem with it, but we will do a side-by-side -side com uh, comparison. Look out for that one in the next few days as we do that particular kit. Anyway, that is the Meng's beautiful 135th scale AH-64D Apache Longbow. <laughs>